The City Commission will now come to order. Would you please rise for the invocation, remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Commissioner Fairchild is giving the invocation this morning. Gracious one, thank you for all of your gifts. The beauty of the spring reminds us of your generous nature. Freely share your wisdom and compassion with us now so that we can be tough-minded and tender-hearted leaders, creating a city where all can live well and thrive. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Beckham, may we please have the roll call? Commissioners Joseph? Aye. Shaw? Aye. Fairchild? Aye. Turner Sloss? Aye. May I have a motion to excuse Mayor Mims for this morning's meeting? So moved, Your Honor. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to excuse Mayor Mims from this morning's meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the minutes of the May 1st, 2024 meeting? So moved. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the May 1st, 2024 meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Uh, Mr. Beckham, any communications or petitions? All have been distributed, Your Honor. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Beckham, any additions, deletions, or comments to the calendar? I have none, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Parlett, any additions, deletions, or comments to the calendar? Uh, Your Honor, I have no additions or deletions, but I do have a few comments. Uh, and I would like to, to call Tony Kroger from Planning Neighborhoods and Development to speak on uh, calendar item number two. And as he uh, comes up, I'll make comments on items three, four, five, and seven. Uh, calendar item number three is uh, an interesting project that we endeavored uh, to do some streetscape work on South Jefferson between East 3rd and East 4th Streets. Uh, there will actually be a final walkthrough. Mr. Stovall will do an inspection on the 16th of this month. Um, but that is uh, nearly complete and uh, quite impressive. Um, Calendar item number four represents uh, a development agreement with JBK Manufacturing and Development. Uh, and this is an exciting job, and I have to commend Mary Faulkner from our Economic Development Division. Uh, this was a very short time frame that we had to respond, and uh, what it, this $75,000 agreement resulted in was the retention of 32 jobs and the creation of 15 new manufacturing jobs uh, in getting a line uh, of production from this company's site in Illinois here in Dayton. Uh, so very good work there. Um, calendar item number five uh, with Wright Dunbar REH. Uh, they desire to add a new retail business position to add to the viability of the Wright Dunbar Business District as well as the city, keeping with the overall mission of an active, walkable, vibrant streetscape along the str this strategic corridor. This project adds $3 million worth of private investment to Southwest Dayton. The funding source is the West, De West Dayton Development Trust Fund. Um, so that's also exciting. And calendar item number seven, finally, thank you, Mr. Kroger. Uh, this is essentially a, a pass-through situation with uh, the Levitt Pavilion, which received a grant from the Ohio Department of Natural Resources. But given that the Levitt doesn't own the property, uh, they do not uh, have the ability to receive the funds from the state, so we are doing that for them uh, so that they can uh, make an investment in the, in the property there. Uh, that is all I have, and I will turn it over then to Mr. Kroger. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning sir. Tony Kroger, Planning Division Manager. I would like to also ask uh, Katie Lunny, uh, who's the Senior Project Manager of Citywide Development, to, to join me. She will help deliver context for this agreement, um, of which we will be speaking, which is a $1.5 million agreement with Civitas Development for new housing at the point uh, located at Kiwi and Valley Streets. Before I uh, delve into the details of the, the project, I wanted to take a pause, take a step back, and, and remind everyone all that we're doing with housing uh, as it relates to ARPA funding. Uh, approved by the City Commission have been various efforts that are now uh, getting underway. Work is starting to become very apparent in our City of Dayton neighborhoods, for example. We see uh, vacant home rehab uh, with, uh, through an agreement with the land bank 
targets have been selected for that and work's about to begin on taking vacant homes, diverting them from our demolition pipeline and bringing them back to a habitable, habitable state. This commission approved funding for new housing in Edgemont uh, with uh, an agreement through uh, with Habitat for Humanity. You guys have probably seen the progress out there at 1005 West 3rd Street uh, as we are supporting pre-development uh, for new housing at, at that site with Sims Development. This commission's approved new housing, new detached single family homes in the Wolf Creek neighborhood uh, to, to, to offer market rate housing in that area. And just last week, this commission approved down payment assistance uh, for those that could use such an affordability enhancement. And then uh, today, uh, the agreement in front of you will be for the aforementioned project at the point at Kiwi and Valley. So I want to take a step back and really kind of, you know, express all that's being done with housing through your leadership in those target neighborhoods that, that this commission uh, put forth. And then there, there's also external awards to various uh, agencies and developments throughout, particularly the target areas, but throughout Dayton. But about this agreement specifically, $1.5 million with Civitas Development Group. Uh, this would be for 16 for sale market rate homes at Kiwi and Valley. Civitas is a company that's based in Cincinnati. They come highly recommended by development partners. Uh, they have a track record of completing urban infill developments such as this one, and it is a minority-led and owned uh, development company. They've been looking to do work in Dayton for quite some time. This, uh, this opportunity was one that they were really excited to, uh, to have the opportunity to take on. There's the um, you know, typical 25% MBE aspirational goal. Funds would be to implement the project, so for uses such as pre-development and construction services. In terms of process, um, about a year and a half ago, we issued an open RFP, or really a notice of funding opportunity, for prospective development at this site. We got one response, and it was beyond uh, what our budget could uh, sustain with our Dayton Recovery Plan funds, and we've talked with that development company and appreciated their interest. However, with it being unfeasible or infeasible, uh, we, were, we were free citywide in the city to um, continue to persist and uh, work on finding a um, suitable partner for the site, and I believe that we found one in Civitas Development. A little, little bit about this site. It's about one acre in area. The, the property is currently owned by Citywide Development, so of course there will be a subsequent conversation if approved today uh, between Civitas and Citywide to make that proper transaction. You know, this, this site takes advantage of a lot of good stuff happening around it, and a lot of investment that this city has made and that this commission has led, including the re realignment of Valley Street. Uh, this is the, the after picture. You probably remember the before picture where it met at a very odd angle. Uh, there's significant investment uh, occurring at the, the park nearby. Katie will talk about that. You're going to have wonderful access to our regional trail system uh, at a site of this nature. And this, this site truly is a major gateway to all of North Dayton, whether it's McCook Field or North Dayton and, and neighborhoods beyond that. Um, you can imagine, for example, heading northbound on Kiwi Street, the impact that new construction would have um, coming over the bridge of the Mad River, for example. And, and new housing has, has always been a long-term planning goal uh, for those residents of Old North Dayton. Katie will talk a little bit about uh, Da Vinci and the context in which this project has emerged. One final note from me before I hand it back uh, to, for, before I hand it to Katie. Um, development at this site is part of adopted plans and policies that this commission has has seen and put forth, uh, including the Dayton Riverfront uh, plan in 2018. New development was contemplated at that time. It's uh, prominent in the Northeast Dayton Neighborhood Vision Plan. And um, I should also note that development at this site is included in uh, the draft neighborhood plan of the old North Dayton neighborhood. So this has been, this didn't come <laughs> far. It's far from an overnight idea. <laughs> and Katie can talk about that a little bit here. Katie. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Um, just thank you to Tony for explaining that project so well. But just I wanted to give a little more context about the project. I know you've all been involved. This is this has been going on since 2012. Citywide's been out there with our partners. You know, it's <clears throat> the city obviously, and then Dayton Children's Hospital, the Croc Center, Five Rivers Metro Parks, um, the Croc Center. I said that uh, St. Mary's Development Corporation, and then also input from both McCook Field and the Old North Dayton neighborhood. So you know, also uh, very important neighborhoods here, but also a significant economic development driver um, for 
the city of Dayton with 10,000 jobs in this geography. So really, really important. Dayton Children's being, um, you know, a major employer and, and inching up to close to $400 million investment um, over the last 10 years. So. All right, Jenny. Okay. Just wanted to share some pictures of some project highlights that have been go going on over the years. Um, you can see down at the, the bottom there, uh, this is one of the first neighborhoods to get some of the, the early wayfinding and branding um, that you've now seen throughout other neighborhoods in the city. Um, we recently completed, um, we've had our flag banners out there forever. We worked with the neighborhood to come up with a more sustainable um, option for those flags. They were having to be replaced about two times a year. So we now are boasting these beautiful metal banners to represent um, some of the, the cultures that exist in the greater old North Dayton neighborhood. Um, at the bottom there where you can see the, the neighborhood bakery, um, we used a TA uh, funded project to do some um, pedestrian scale lighting, some landscaping, um, banners, stamped concrete, and um, crosswalks at that site to really add a more pedestrian scale to Troy Street, which is really kind of the business district of the neighborhood. Obviously, um, a huge win with the neighborhood um, children's garden right across from the campus of Dayton Children's. That was a 100% um, privately funded project, but it's been a huge asset to the neighborhood. Uh, we spoke already about Dayton Children's and their investment. And then a really exciting project, um, expanding the Point Park project. Um, again, this became really viable because of the road realignment project. We've always envisioned housing at the site across the street, but rethinking the vision of Point Park and how that interacts with the river and the community around it. So some exciting things over the last 10 plus years. And then until recently, we hadn't done a lot with housing. Um, there had been demolition and blight removal through both NIP and ARPA funding. Um, in about 2017, we did a DIY home repair and paint project, um, which homeowners were able to um, get a grant to do exterior repairs on their houses. So steps, railings, gutters, things of that nature. Um, and then also had the option to receive free paint that, that they could then use to paint their houses. So we had about 26 homeowners that took advantage of that. And then more recently, and I know you're all familiar with this, um, as there is ARPA funding also in the Kinship Care Housing Project, which is um, going to break ground very, very soon and will be a great um, uh, asset to our community to have uh, available housing for people that are taking care of um, minors that, um, you know, that, that may be in a place where they are not, um, it's not suitable for them to live in currently. So I'm really excited about that project. And then I'll switch it back, back over to Tony. So I want to talk a moment about Civitas. And first I will ask uh, Mr. Beckham if you would please distribute this uh, letter to, to members of the, of the commission. So Darren Hall is the president and CEO of Civitas. And he very much wanted to be here today. And I mean that he is out of state dealing with a, a family matter. Um, he asked that this letter be provided to members of the commission. I will go ahead and briefly... Uh, read it. He says, Dear Dayton City Commission, we at Civitas Development Group sincerely appreciate the Dayton City Commission's consideration of the agreement for Dayton Recovery Plan funds. While I will be out of state for the scheduled meeting, I wanted to express my excitement for the project at the point and the partnership it entails. We hope that it will be the start of a long-standing collaboration. Our company specializes in urban infill redevelopment and we believe we can add much needed housing and reinvestment where it is most needed. We look forward to success on this project, which is a key gateway to North Dayton. Thank you for your consideration, and we look forward to working with the City of Dayton, Citywide Development, and the Old North Dayton Neighborhood, signed Darren Hall. Uh, and then the second page is more of a biographical uh, uh, look at, 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 at their president and CEO. But uh, that letter was uh, provided uh, for you to, to know that he wished to have been here, and he's excited for the opportunity. On the slide, as you see it right now, are the early uh, renderings and, and the site plan, um, you know, how this goes. It's, it's all going to be subject to change. There will be much discussion between the developer and staff and the neighborhood to refine uh, the, the appearance. The layout, there, there's, there's only so much you can do with the layout of 16 units at this site as there's a massive storm underground utility that goes right through the center of the site to the, to the Mad River. Um, which is probably the constraining variable why there wasn't more uh, initial response here. It's a challenging site, but uh, Darren and Civitas uh, look forward to, to implementing the vision that's been around for, for several years between both citywide and the neighborhood and residents in the vicinity. And I 
now that I'm mentioning those those residents in the neighborhood, I, I will state that a few of them have signed up to speak and they wish to to talk about this project as well. Uh, with that in mind, I, I think I can go ahead and conclude our slides and ask if there's any questions for us. Commissioners, any questions? Mr. Kroger? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, thank you, Mr. Kroger, for being here, as well as Mrs. Lemmy. I believe I have that right. I, thank you. Um, thank you both. I really appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you for the um, brief, but... Um, high level overview of, of the project itself. This is very exciting to your point since 2012. Uh, I vaguely remember some of the conversations about this project itself and developing the point. Um, one question that I do have, and perhaps it's still early in the, um, early to determine, but is there an ideal of the price point for the housing, use it, housing unit, excuse me? Yeah, Katie, remind me what he suggested initially. Yeah, so we had a market study done a couple years ago for the entire neighborhood, um, and we really view this site as not only a new opportunity for the neighborhood to have new housing, which they have not had in a very, very long time, but also offering a new product type that can serve the neighborhood, employees in the neighborhood. Um, we're right at the access of 4 and 75, so, you know, great opportunity there. We talked about the access to the parks. Um, and then also just, you're just right across the bridge from downtown. So it's another opportunity to maybe capture some of those downtown buyers as well. So right now, construction, he hasn't gotten all of his bids back. Um, but his best guess is going to be around $250,000. Now keep in mind that this is in a CRA, so you'll have tax abatement. Um, and then also there may be some down payment assistance available um, as well. So um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good start. So we'll, that number will probably adjust a little bit, but that's what he's thinking right now. Do you have a number, uh, an ideal of the number of bedrooms, baths? It right. So right now, um, it's two to three bedrooms, and I say that because it has two bedrooms with baths attached, and then a third bedroom that could serve as an office um, or a bedroom that does have a closet. Um, it's hard to see on here, uh, but if, if we could send it to you, you can get a, a zoom in a little bit on the, the site plan. We have those as well. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Thank Your you Honor. Commissioner. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, where is, is there parking included on the I got it. In, in the development, and where is the access? Because I think mm -hmm. realignment is a misstatement. I think reconfiguration of that intersection right. is a better one. That's a very congested and awkward. Right. Sure. No, this? I got it. Okay. Uh, so parking will occur to the north of the buildings. It was important from a design standpoint that those buildings address the street and face the street as one would would typically hopefully want in an urban environment. So then the parking is then behind it. Um, you know, it will meet our zoning requirement, I'm sure, which is one space per, per unit. It will probably exceed that. In terms of vehicular access, there will not be curb cuts along Kiwi and Valley. So one would have to get there from uh, Creston and Herman. Mm -hmm. Creston and Herman, which is a little bit of a roundabout way, but the nice thing is it's a residential project. Once you've done it once, you know how to do it. Um, one of the neighbors uh, is here to, to speak, and he, he knows the Creston Herman uh, uh, route well to, to get to those properties. So for that reason, it makes more sense for residential than commercial anyway, right? Because right. if residential, well, you, you know how to get there. It's your own house, right. or, or you've told somebody how to get there. Commercial would be tough uh, because curb cuts there are probably going to be a no-go yeah. for many reasons. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner, any further? Good. Right. Thank you very much. This is a great project, and we're looking forward yeah. to seeing it come to completion here. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Your Honor. As uh, Mr. Kroger indicated, we do have a few folks here to speak on that calendar item. Great. And they signed up through the regular? Yes, sir. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Beckham, any citizens registered to speak on calendar items? Yes, Your Honor. There are three citizens registered to speak on calendar items. I'd like to state that there is a three-minute time limit. As you address the commission, we ask that you state your name and address for the record. At that time, I will turn on the green light. When the green light comes on, you will have three minutes to speak. After you have spoken two and a half minutes, a yellow light will come on. You will have 30 seconds remaining to speak. When the red light comes on, you will be asked to cease your comments and take your seat. To the audience in attendance, I ask that everyone be respectful by refraining from any utterance, gesture, conversation that would prevent the city commission from hearing the speaker's comments. I call to the podium Steve Dilhoff. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Steve Dilhoff, 714 Greenmount Boulevard, 45419. You may begin. I love the idea of the, so the, the development of the program. I don't have a problem with that at all. I do have a little bit of a dilemma with the amount you're looking at subsidizing. Um, $1.5 million out of a $4 million project. 
They just mentioned they're going to sell the houses for $250,000 is the goal, which is subject to change. You guys are looking at subsidizing about $100,000 per house, which means the investor is going to put in $150,000 and they're going to make a profit of $100,000. That's a 60% profit. And to me, it seems like a little bit high on the amount of subsidy. I love the idea of doing it. Civitas is a great company. I have no problem with the concept of that. But the amount of funding is almost like we're going to be a 40% partner in something that as a city uh, resident, we see no real, I mean, we're going to get the benefit of 16 houses, but we could do modular homes in other areas and subsidize some of that. We can do other things, and you guys are already doing some great ideas of, of getting things in there. But in this case, you're looking at subsidizing 37.5% of the total cost of a project that's already got all kinds of bells and whistles. And as an investor, they could come in and say, what is a reasonable profit? It seems to be that a lower subsidy could be considered because 60% does seem a little bit excessive in the regards to the project. I think it's a great idea. I think we need housing. We need housing there. We need housing in Westwood. We need housing East End. We need housing everywhere. But to put so much money into one spot seems a little bit high. Um, that being said, great company, great vision. think it's a wonderful idea, but would encourage you guys to consider maybe changing the amount that you're considering doing. Um, I'm sure there's other things that I'm not privy to that go into this place, so there might be other stuff into that, and I, I don't want to take that for granted, but I would encourage the, the consideration of the amount of funding that we're looking at doing this. And I have no problem with the for-profit business making money. You know, they're they're going to make money. I'm okay with that. I, I'm a business owner. But 60% for a project to help the city seems like a, some additional benefit could be given to reducing that amount to be able to redirect funds towards other projects in addition. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for your comments. Thank you, Mr. Dohoff. I call it to the podium, Matt Tepper. <clears throat> Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Matthew Tepper, 702 Troy Street, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. You may begin. Commission, uh, I'm the, as you know, um, my name is Matt Tepper. I'm the president of the Old North Dayton Neighborhood Association. Uh, I... Uh, and the Neighborhood Association is absolutely ecstatic by this opportunity. We, we um, have worked with our public and other public uh, and private partners to come up with a long-term plan for the point. Uh, a number of years ago, it was probably the, one of the rougher areas in the, in the neighborhood. Um, we have been working with all groups, engaging all groups, to come up with opportunities. Uh, and those opportunities are coming to fruition. And this is an amazing one. Um, we not only have the opportunity uh, to establish new housing in Old North Dayton, but also to raise the standard of quality in housing with those dollars. Um, Currently, I can think of certain houses that are uh, in the hot and heavy real estate market that are, are of equivalent uh, market asking price, um, but are not of that standard. Uh, and we need, to, we need that readjustment, that realistic readjustment for our residents. Uh, we've been planning this for a number of years, uh, and we are in 100% support. I am available for any questions uh, you may have. Thank you, Mr. Tepper. Yeah. Thank Thanks you, Mr. Comments. Tepper. Yeah, thank you. I call to the podium Brennan Waldron. Good morning. Good morning. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, Brennan Waldron, 31 Creston Avenue. Good morning, Commission. Um, I uh, am a resident of the neighborhood, and I'm actually one of the closest residents to this project. I live I'm the only resident on Creston Avenue at the moment. Um, I have a wife, two very young children. Uh, in addition, I own, um, my wife and I own a few of the rentals on Herman Avenue, also very close to this development. Um, and as well, I work at, at Dayton Children's Hospital. So I live, I work in this neighborhood. I'm almost there 24-7. Um, this is a project that when I heard about this, when we first moved in about eight years ago, we heard rumblings of this happening and, you know, I was always curious on what will this look like, how will this be, and now that it's firming up and the details are coming out, we are extremely excited. And when I say we, I mean my wife and I, my neighbors, um, the renters in the neighborhood. We look forward to, you know, what this opportunity could bring. 
Um, I imagine at this price point and in this location, you'll see individuals who um, are commuting to downtown, want to live closer, uh, nurses, doctors that work at the hospital that want to have a closer commute, um, and ultimately somebody who wants to access the great uh, outdoor activities that we have. We're close to the bike trail, we're close to the river, um, and it's a, a perfect opportunity for the city to show we want you here. We want you to stay here. We want you to work here. Um, so that's all I have. Happy to answer any questions as a resident, um, but I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you, you for your Waddle. comments. Appreciate Thank it. You. That is all. Thank you, Mr. Beckham. Uh, commissioners, any comments on the city manager's recommendations? Commissioner? Uh, yes, very briefly. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just very quickly, if I'm not mistaken, the, um, the project we were just dis discussing, the calendar item number two, the Centivus, Centivus, excuse me, development uh, project, that is, in fact, an ARPA awarded date and recovery plan funding project. Is that correct? That's correct? And so just for clarification, I appreciate Mr. Dilhoff's comments, but that's one of the flexibilities, and correct me if I'm wrong, of the ARPA dollars. Uh, it reminds me it may be somewhat similar to the Neighborhood Stabilization Program and to make sure that we are um, having the flexibility and the attractiveness to develop some of these um, more complicated sites, if you will. So again, uh, to your point, uh, there's some of the nuances and again, some of the flexibility of the, um, the ARPA funding to allow projects to take place. Um, it, do I have that? Somewhat correct. Yes, ma'am. All right, very good. Uh, so again, thank you, Mr. Dilhoff, for your comments, Mr. Tepper and Mr. Walden. I appreciate you being here this morning as well. Last thing that I want to mention very briefly in regards to calendar item number five, the Wright Dunbar R E H L L C development. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you're seeing we're seeing rather a lot of development that's taking place in Wright Dunbar. To your point, Mr. Pilot, very exciting. But this site again is on the corner of Broadway and West 3rd Street. I believe it's going to be a restaurant, XO Burger, if I'm not mm. mistaken. So again, very excited to see this um, coming into fruition. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner? Yeah, no, I echo my colleagues' comments and exciting projects coming in. You know, we've been kind of high hand tied with being able to demolish and not really do neighborhood development and do something constructive and seeing what we're doing in the business district in Wright Dunbar and you know, I, I think this is a new product in the old North Dayton, and that's probably part of the reason there's such a high price tag on it um, compared to other projects. But um, I think it resets that neighborhood to be able to have development in many different ways and uh, opens up a whole lot of new po possibilities for that area. So that's a very exciting opportunity. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner? No, I'm good, thanks. I uh, just want to thank city staff and citywide staff for just tenacity at mm -hmm. staying at this site. This has been a long time in coming, well over a decade in planning. Uh, the fact that even after our initial effort sort of foundered, uh, that uh, staff continued to work uh, and to find a solution, find a partner, find a way to get new housing into Old North Dayton, a location which sorely needs it, especially now. Uh, and really, I think has a bright future. When we look at the area around Miami Valley Hospital and UD, we look at uh, the area around Children's there, uh, we look at Wright Dunbar, there are examples of how we can do it and how we can do it right. Um, and sometimes it takes a little pump priming to get things started, uh, especially on a difficult site like this. So, uh, Mr. Parlett, if you'd relay our, our thanks to the staff for uh, just basic tenacity getting this thing done. We appreciate it citywide also. Uh, and I think that maybe the most important thing about this is that it's going to unlock and attract other investments. Uh, people can see it can be done. It's not just a, a blank spot, a, you know, a well-manicured lawn at this point uh, that uh, people can see housing can happen, new housing can happen in Old North. Um, and it's, uh, I'm very excited about the direction of this neighborhood. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Parlin. Uh Okay. Well, I would uh, have, take a motion to approve city manager's recommendations. I move to approve the city manager's recommendations. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to approve the city manager's recommendations. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Uh, legislation, Mr. Beckham. First reading, emergency resolution number 6799-24. 
authorizing the acceptance of a 2024 grant award from the State of Ohio Department of Natural Resources through its Community Parks, Recreation, and Conservation pro Project in the amount of $150,000.00 on behalf of Levitt Dayton and declaring an emergency. Uh, being declared an emergency, I move for the immediate passage of resolution number 6799-24. Second the motion, Your Honor. It's been properly moved and seconded to declare emergency resolution number 6799-24 an emergency. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Second reading emergency resolution number 6799-24 authorizing the acceptance of a 2024 grant award from the State of Ohio Department of Natural Resources through its Community Parks, Recreation, and Conservation Project in the amount of $150,000.00 on behalf of Levitt Dayton. Commissioners Joseph? Aye. Shaw? Aye. Fairchild? Aye. Turner Sloss? Aye. First reading emergency resolution number 6800-24, authorizing the settlement of outstanding home investment partnerships program debt and forgiveness of accrued interest, authorizing the execution of a home loan debt settlement on behalf of the city of Dayton and declaring an emergency. Having been declared an emergency, I move for the immediate passage of resolution number 680024. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded to declare emergency resolution number 6800 24 an emergency. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Second reading emergency resolution number 6800 24, authorizing the settlement of outstanding home investment partnerships, program debt, and forgiveness of accrued interest authorizing the execution of a home loan debt settlement on behalf of the city of Dayton. Commissioners Joseph? Aye. Shaw? Aye. Fairchild? Aye. Turner Sloss? Aye. That is all, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Beckham. Uh, any citizens registered to speak this morning? There are none. Uh, Mr. Parlett, any closing comments? I have none, Your Honor. Ooh. Mr. Beckham, any closing comments? No, sir. Nothing there. Commissioners, any closing comments? Yes, I would just like to um, congratulate and uplift a day in public schools, uh, Stivers uh, School for the Performing Arts for listed as one of the 100 uh, top performing uh, schools in the state of Ohio. Um, and I believe that is all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner? Well, since we have a little spare time, I think I'll use the opportunity to reflect. I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> There's one in every bunch, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I am good today. Thank you. Thank you. With no further business to come, actually, there is one small thing. I want to congratulate Mr. Beckham for getting through a meeting very well, doing a great <laughs> job. There, you know, we're a next person up mentality around here. We just get her done. So I, thank you very much. I Mr. would Beckham. say flawless execution, Your Honor. <laughs> flawless, flawless. And Your Honor, I'm I'm sorry. I apologize. You're fine. Go ahead. Um, there may be an announcement in regards to next week's meeting. Oh yeah, uh, due to a majority of commissioners being out of town next Wednesday, there will be no commission meeting next Wednesday. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Yes. Yeah. Now, with no further business to come before the Dayton City Commission, the meeting is adjourned.